Gafke, is that you? Yes, it's I. Light your lamp. Light? No. Not here. Which way? Trust the money. It's not much for what we do together. What I do, old man, you will merely keep watch. Lead the way. Over here. flowers on his coffin, and the women wept. The dew glistened in the morning like the tears. I saw them weeping while they laid him to rest. Wait for me outside. Leave me alone. Alone in here? What kind of a man are you? A man with money. Now go. I... A human face and terror? Terror has the human form divine. Tonight we will see how one man's cruelty and jealousy create a terror which can scarcely be considered human and which waits silently, malevolent, beneath the lid of this teakwood chest. That's the name of our story, The Terror in Teakwood. Join us now as these others did who had the misfortune to learn what it contains. Mr. Guy Rolf, Miss Hazel Court, Mr. Charles Aitman, and Mr. Reggie Nalder. I can't permit you to leave. You've already learned a great deal too much. I can only suggest that you get a grip on yourself. Jerry. Come on in. Come on in. Nice to see you again. After all this long time. Still a place of honor. Turn it around so you'd notice. Well, you shouldn't have. But I admit it pleases me. Champagne? No, thank you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Well, what's your problem? 
Come on, you said you needed my help. Well, it's, it's Vladimir. Oh? What's wrong with him? Well, I know it's silly, but I don't know. I don't know. Well, you married him. He's your husband, in spite of anything I could do. Oh, I'm sorry, Leonie. Come on, now tell me what's upset you so. Well, I'm frightened. I'm terrified. By your husband? No, for him. I'm convinced that someone's trying to kill him. You ought to be talking to the police. I tried to, but he wouldn't let me. Okay. Last night, someone broke into the apartment. Suddenly, I woke up and I found someone touching my throat and my face. Cold, dreadful hands. I screamed and I reached for the light. There was Vladimir sitting on the other bed. His face was ashen. There was blood all over his body and his pajamas were torn. Oh, it was horrible, Jerry. Absolutely horrible. He didn't call the police? I tried to, but he wouldn't let me. He said I was never to speak of it again. You mean somebody attacked you and your husband says to forget it? This isn't the first time I've found him all bloody and exhausted as if he'd been fighting. Something's come between us, Jerry. Something so horrible that, well, he can't talk to me about it. All right. What do you want me to do? Thank you, Jerry. I knew you'd help. We've taken an apartment while we're here in New York. And I want you to come and live with us. Oh? Oh, I have it all arranged. Vladimir's manager is ill. And he needs someone to uh, look after his affairs while we're here in New York. Uh, tomorrow night is the first concert of the American tour. Mm -hmm. Before we left Vienna, Vladimir wrote to Glockstein, asking him to find someone to uh, represent him here. I called Glocky from Paris, asking him to recommend you. I see. You've been scheming. Just a little. Do you think your husband would accept me, an old rifle, working for him? Oh, he doesn't know anything about you. Please, Jerry. I'll talk to Glocky. But if he agrees with me, you're going to go to the police. But if he thinks I can help, I'll do what you want. Thank you. Deaf. Can't you hear it? I'm sorry, Professor. Oh, contrition is no substitute for talent. Oh, you, you young people, you think technical proficiency is all there is. Music flows from heart. Oh. You don't give me a chance. You interrupt. 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 Oh. Oh, forgive me, forgive me. You must think nothing of it. It was good, very good. Pay no attention to an old man, huh? Come on, start again, huh? No. You're a sadist and a tyrant. And the best piano teacher in the world. Oh, Miss Curtis! Miss Curtis! <laughs> what did you do to her? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I like her. She's got talent. Yeah. <laughs> sit down, sit down. <laughs> oh. You've come about Leonie, huh? Yeah. Did she call you? Yes. Well, what do I do, Glocky? Take the job, of course. Well, that's what I want to do. It's a chance to be near Leonie again. But you know how I feel about her. How can she be happy with that V-check? Why, you know something about him? I know he's the greatest pianist in the world. Old genius is hard to live with. That she knew when she married him. Yes, but uh, Vichik must be impossible. He has but one passion, his music. For years, only one idea, to surpass Karnovitz. Believe me, my friend, it was a mania. But Karnovitz is dead. Can you believe this? Vichik took his young bride, on her honeymoon, mind you, to Karnowitz's funeral. 
just to assure himself that his rival was really dead. Since then, Leonie has been afraid. Of what? I wish I knew. Even Leonie is not sure. She told you about that night. You don't think it could have been Vicek himself, do you? I cannot tell. I do not know. But I know this, my friend. You must help her. Hello? It's for you. Hello? Oh, Jerry! Jerry, come over quickly, please! For heaven's sake, come quickly! so worried about you. Yes, yes, yes. I mustn't worry. It's not serious. Well, what was going on in that room? I was trying to break down the door. Who is this? Oh, this is Mr. Welsh, darling. Glocky sent him over. How do you do, Mr. Vichik? Glocky? Mr. Glockstein. Of course, of course. Well, uh, I called him because I, I needed some help. And uh, Mr. Welsh was in the office talking about the secretarial job. And uh, very kindly came over. He feels that... <laughs> Well, he thinks you should have a doctor, no, darling. No, I need no doctor. Well, is there anything I can do? Yes, there is one thing you can do. Forget what you have seen. But there are no buts, Mr. Welsh. Mr. Glockstein seems to think you're the man I need. Your presence here indicates that you find my proposition acceptable. If you're to work for me, one thing must be clearly understood. I expect my employees to accept my wishes without question. Yes, of course. It might be more convenient for you to stay here whilst you're in my employ. Well, I... I don't think... Uh... There is a spare room down the corridor. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must make myself presentable. I should be rehearsing most of the day. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Welsh, for coming over. You've been most helpful. Not at all. I hope your husband will feel better soon. Oh, I'm sure he will. Thank you. Since you are to work for me, Mr. Welsh, in a position of trust, I would like you to look after this for me until I return. It's an interesting box. Looks a little like a casket. It's valuable. Important would be a better word. Keep it always in sight, you understand? Always in sight. Leonie, will you drive me down to the hall? Yes, of course. I'll just show Mr. Welsh his room.
what's going on here right now doesn't make any sense at all. Somebody's trying to kill him, and you too, maybe. And your husband doesn't want to go to the police. That only means one thing to me, that he knows who it is, and he's frightened. Yes, he's frightened. Sometimes in the night, I, I catch him staring at me. All this began when Konovich died. Glocky said that uh, he went to Karnovitz's funeral. Yes, except... Well, I believe that Konovich is still alive. Oh, no, that's ridiculous. The press, friends, there were thousands of people at the funeral. No, Jerry, just let me tell you. One night he left me, late. A few hours later he came back. And the look of hatred in his eyes was maniacal. He said he'd been to the cemetery. It's a pleasant honeymoon chat. Well, I asked him why. He just looked at me and said one word. Karnovich. Now, Jerry, that was when all this terror began. And I believe he went to the cemetery and he found that the body was missing. I believe that Karnovich is still alive, that he's here in New York. Does that make any sense to you at all? No, it doesn't. Oh, Jerry, I know I'm right. The music. The music in the room was the seventh sonata, the Karnovich sonata. And it was being played with a, a mastery like I've never heard before. Karnovich is the only person in the world that can do that. No one else is physically capable of it. When the music stopped, Vladimir screamed like a frightened child. Now, Vladimir is not a man to scream easily, but in the grip of a fear. No, wait, you know, uh, wait. If he was to think, mind you, if he was to think, Karnovitz was still alive. Can you imagine what that would do to him? Oh, a genius like that is very close to me. That's a very delicate thing. S supposing Karnovitz was in our apartment that night, has been there many times before. Supposing that Karnovitz is trying to kill Vladimir. Just answer me one question, Leonie, and then I'll believe you. I, I don't know. But I'm frightened. I think we both need a drink. How about you? I wonder why.
sick single manager. Aren't you? Come on now, what do you want? Money. Money. It will put an end to my troubles. Plenty of it. I'm listening. My name is Kafke. And once I was caretaking a graveyard. You know the man puts away those empty yellow carcasses that used to be full of life and love and hate and all the wonderful things that life could be. A nice occupation, isn't it? Get to the point, Gafke. Always in a hurry, like the time that's running out for all of us. There's not much left for me. And I know just how a little money would make it easier for me to face the grave and the silence and the cold in a coffin with handles of gold, pure gold. What I know is worth a lot more than what I have. What do you know about what? About Witzig. And about Karnowitz. He's not dead, is he? <laughs> not dead. <laughs> you don't know very much, do you? You go back to your Witzig and tell him Gafke has come from the graveyard all the way to America to put an end to his poverty. When I opened the doors of the mausoleum for him, he was just a stranger with a touch of madness on him. But now I know who he is. A famous man, a rich man. And if I tell what I know, they will put him in prison. Put him in prison. For what? <laughs> what happened in that graveyard? My money first. And it's got to be plenty, you understand? I tell him that I'd have got this. His knife. Let him keep his wooden box. But I want my money. All this will have more work to do. Where can I find you when I want you? Right here. Every night. Go. Says you. What? Hey, wait a minute. Okay, okay, boy. Take the city desk. Hi, Sylvia. Ha! Huh? The very man I want to see. How are you? You're working for a madman, lover boy. Did you know that? I know, but I didn't think you knew. You don't know how mad. An egotistical, ill-mannered, conceited, arrogant madman. I take it he's not your favorite musician. Here, I brought your tickets myself. Tickets to a funeral. To the destruction of a once great pianist. Doomed to the extinction he deserves. I wish I hated music. Then I could really take pleasure in watching V-Sex Folly. 
I wish I knew what you were talking about. You mean you don't know about the change in the program? Well, I know he's not going to play the Picello. And you don't know what he's substituting? Do you? I do. He's going to play the Carnovitz Seven. His choice of words, not mine. I'd say he's going to attempt it. And he'll make himself a laughing stock. He'll be booed off the stage. He must be out of his mind. Like I said, a madman. Karnovitz and Visek, the great rivals. Brother, I could tell you a story or two about them if you weren't so young and innocent. They hated each other's chitterlings. Chitterlings? Did you find that in the style book? There's nothing fit to print that describes those two. You know why Karnowitz wrote that seventh of his? Because he was fed up with Vichek yapping at his heels. He wrote himself a sonata no one could play who couldn't match the phenomenal spread of his hands. I've heard that. Vichek never forgave him for it. And when Karnowitz died, I tell you, Vichek positively gloated, publicly. He laid his hatred out for all the world to see. A hatred bordering on insanity, a pathological hatred, centered on a pair of hands. But what hands? They were long and white and delicate, the most beautiful hands in the world. Did you ever see them? Yes, Sylvia. I have seen them. Jerry! Oh, Jerry! another piano in a hurry no 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 it's all right there is no time no uh, the black letter l grand the one i've always liked second best uh, yes but you, you must hurry uh, there is no much time good i'll wait for it as soon as you can i have to tune it fine oh jerry Thank heaven you've come. Now look at this. A disaster! Look at it. We locked the vault so that no one would touch the piano. Who would do such a thing? Does he know about this? We thought it best not to mention it. Don't you agree? Did you see a weird man with a limp around here? Yes, I did. He said that he wanted to see Mr. Vichek. And? I told him to come back after the concert. You think he's the one that did this? Maybe, maybe. Did you order another piano? Yes, it will be here soon. Uh, we'll have to call the police, and then Weber and Grant, they'll want to know about it, and there's a business about insurance. Now, we're not going to say anything about this before the concert, agreed? I'll tell Vichik myself after the concert. Good. Glocky. He's decided to play the Carnivit Seventh. What? The Carnivit Seventh? Well, Jerry, he's insane. He'll never do it, never. It, it will mean he's ruined if he tries it. We must stop it. How? You think he'll listen to either one of us? I came over as soon as he went to rest. Jerry, I think he saw us together last night. Tell him about us? No, no, of course not. You don't know how violent he can be. I do, Leone, believe me, I do. You just can't stay with him any longer. He's my husband, Jerry. Do you know what was in that box he gave me to keep for him? No, but after he'd given it to you, a sort of peace came over him, as if a menace had been removed. What he's done, Leone. What he's done is really horrible. remember telling me that he went to Carnovitz's crypt? Yes, yes. Well, it wasn't enough for him to know that Carnovitz was really dead. Your husband went to the crypt, opened the casket, and made a cast of his hands. I, I don't believe it. But I don't believe it. It's not possible. Well, now, listen to me, listen to me. 
This afternoon, Sylvia Slattery told me that this pathological hatred of Conovitz was centered on those tremendous hands. Don't you see? He wanted a permanent reminder of his rival's death. And that's where this madness took him. To the desecration of a corpse. And that's why this Gafke is blackmailing him, because he led him into the mausoleum. And you know where that cast is now? It's in that teak wood box he gave me yesterday. It's horrible. It's horrible. I don't believe it. It's yeah, true. Yeah. It's I saw them. They're in the box. You've got to leave him, Leonie. You've got to leave him now. All right. All right. But I must go to the concert. Why? I don't know. I don't know, but I must go. so much hatred. He's a great pianist, but a blackguard glucky, a caitiff, a cullion, and a loo. A lot of people in there have come to watch him die. All right, I'm one of them. I want to see their mockery tear him apart, and that's what they're going to do. You're late, Sonny. You might have missed the fireworks. I'm sorry, Miss Slattery. But the traffic is backed up on that avenue a mile long. You never saw anything like it. You're in the big city now, boy. Get in there and find yourself a dark corner. And if the stage manager sees you, he'll throw you out, so keep out of his sight. Gee, I'm sorry, Miss Slattery. I won't let it happen again. I promise. Shut up and get in there. Yeah. Yeah, OK, Miss Slattery. <sighs> Too good to go unrecorded, Lucky. So, I'm a Jezebel. I'm a good reporter, too. Well, unless he backs down, the next one is the big one. Now the devil gets his due, Glocky. See you after the funeral. History is being made, so enjoy it. The Seventh Sonata, and only one man could ever play it.
make it. If she does stir, give me a call. What the devil's going on? I looked for you, Mr. Welch. I had to take a taxi. Leonie. What's wrong? She collapsed. I had to bring her home. This is Dr. Hilton. There was nothing to worry about. But I don't understand. What's happened? I gave her a sedative. She'll be fine in the morning. Just let her rest. Did you hear the sonata, Mr. Welch? She heard it. Good. Good. I wouldn't have liked her to have missed it. A triumph for both of us. If you'd like, I'll stop by again in the morning. Yes, do that, please. And thank you. Not at all. It's a pleasure. A pleasure indeed. I'll show you out. Thank you. Remember my name. Shh. Why did you come here? I want money. What else is there for an old man? Blackmail. Call it what you like. A lot of money for my old age, Mr. Witzek. I too know how to use your knife. Do you think I keep enough money here in the house to satisfy you? I'll pay for your silence, yes, but you'll have to wait. You've had time to get the money. Let us not play games, huh? I told your manager what I wanted. You told my manager. What did you tell him, Gavke? That I want the money now. You miserable scum. You think I'm afraid of you? 
You think I'll let you ruin my triumph? Because of me, you came out of the grave. And because of me, you shall return. Sleeping, Mr. Welsh. A successful night for all of us, wouldn't you say? You mean the concert? For me, the pianist. For you, the lover. What's that supposed to mean? It was kind of you to leave your door open, Mr. Welsh. What did you expect to hear? Screams, perhaps, as I beat my unfaithful wife. Should I be less careful about her safety than you? I told you once that what is mine, I keep. Perhaps I shall also add that what I cannot keep, I destroy. Where is she? In her room. Our room, Mr. Welsh. Where else should she be? Make yourself easy, Mr. Welsh. Open the box. Go on, it is not locked. What have you done with him, Vichik? Where are they? You will not leave this room, Mr. Welsh, and I will. But first, I will tell you something of Karnovitz. That once great pianist now lying a mangled corpse in a desecrated grave. And even after he died, you couldn't forgive him for being a greater pianist than you. That's a lie. He was second rate, always second rate. Those freakish hands of his were all he had. There was nothing else, no greatness, nothing but the hands of a freak. Do you hear me? A freak! But you stole them. Yes, I stole them. Because they had always stood between me and the fame that should have been mine. And even in death, Carnivitz left that malevolent sonata of his behind that he and no one else could play. But even in death, I found a way to conquer him. I won. You know you're insane, don't you? Am I, Mr. Welsh? Am I? Who is to say? Yes, I stole those hands so that I could keep them with me always in my possession, the helpless hands of Karnovitz. There's more to the story, isn't there? Yes, there is more. A strange thing happened, Mr. Welch. In time, in time, those hands came alive. Can you believe that? Supple and soft and flexible and alive. I found I could even put them on like gloves. Does that horrify you? Dead hands of a dead man. That came alive for me. I found that I could use them. And once I even played that great, incredible seventh sonata with them. And then I knew the truth, the truth, Mr. Welsh. It was never Carnivitz who played. It was those wonderful, incredible hands that once were his, and now they are mine. And they still fought you? Yes, they fought me. The spirit came back into them, even as the life had done, and they fought me. They tried to tear me to pieces while I was sleeping to wreak their vengeance on me, to kill me. They became alive with a savage, monstrous will of their own. And then you came, Mr. Welsh, full of sly, insidious evil to take my Leonie from me. An unfaithful wife, Mr. Welsh. What punishment would you say she deserves? Stay where you are. You will wait with me, and you will listen with me, and then you will watch with me. I know what those hands are capable of. I placed them on her bed, close beside her on the pillow, while she slept. 
She stirred once and she called your name, but she sleeps again like an innocent child. Like an innocent child. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.